uh, for this day, for what the Lord does to us all the time. I want to talk about the battles of life, the battles of life that people go through. And uh, many times as you walk through the journey of life, you're going to encourage, to, to encounter a lot of uh, uh, battles of life. Today, I want to talk about the battle of shame. I want to talk about the battle of shame. Somewhere in the book of Psalms, it says, I run unto you, O Lord, that I, will, that I may not be put in shame. And um, my daughter has a favorite verse. It's in the book of Romans, chapter 11. I'm not so sure which verse. But it says, those that trust in the Lord shall not be put to shame. Those that trust in the, the Lord to shame. You see, shame is a, is a painful feeling of humiliation or distress, which is caused by the consciousness of behavior, which is perceived to be foolish or wrong. Shame is a very universal thing. Every human being experiences an amount of shame. We live it, we experience it throughout our life without even being aware. We are often even afraid to mention uh, that we have been ashamed in one way or another. Shame is a critical molding component of who we are. You know, uh, when I was growing up, my mother used to tell me, Ruth, you are a girl. You must have a sense of shame with you. You know, that must have a sense of shame. That, you know, you should be able to get embarrassed about certain things. And because we don't want to get embarrassed as human beings, we live around, we mold our life around avoiding shame. We use it to build significant parts of our life, like our parenting, like our education, our marriages, our families. We build all of them around shame. Uh, what does it feel like to be ashamed. To be ashamed feels like being rejected, like you are an outsider, you are not belonging, and many times the society does that to us. It, shame feels like hating yourself and justifying why, others are, uh, why other people hate you. Shame feels like looking at, down about you. Shame feels like in, being intensely flawed and therefore unworthy of full acceptance and belonging. It, shame feels like having attributes and thought would prefer to hide from anyone, uh, from everyone. You don't want to be exposed. Shame is working very hard to show the world what it wants to see. You know, as human beings, we, we do not want the world to laugh. We don't want the world to, to get embarrassed on our behalf for the choices that we have made in society. But most of the time, because we fail, we tend to define ourselves around shame. So um, what do those battles of shame uh, do to us? What do those battles of shame do to us? If I want us to look at the, the story of the woman at the hemorrhaging woman, the one that had a flaw for 12 years. When I want to go into her feet and know what she was doing, one of the things she did was probably hide in her home away from people. So whenever we feel we are not good enough or we feel that there are things going wrong in our life, the first thing that we do is to Hide. That is a manifestation of shame. When you don't want to, re, uh, to relate with others. We hide in our offices. We hide under our work. We are working so much. We hide away from people that know us so that they don't have much to say. Some of us hide in our work. We hide in our gardens. 
we hide in our phones and we hide in magazine pages, we hide in fashion, we hide in Netflix, we hide in humility and even in humor. Do you know that some people, uh, to avoid a lot of shame, they make others laugh, they make others look like they are happy, but probably it's because there are certain things in our lives that we would not rather call, confront. Um, there was a preacher, his name was Desiring uh, Bloom J. He, his, he has done a lot of biblical series on the shame of a human being. And if we look in the Bible, we'll see that most of the people, including the hemorrhaging women, woman, have suffered a lot of shame because society isolates us, we isolate ourselves, and we fear that we might, it might be manifested very well. Uh, what I want to ask about, what are some of the shame battles that you are fighting right now? What are the shame ba battles that you are fighting right now? Some of them are body image. Women, be, today being a women's Sabbath, I would like to say that women fight a lot, many, many shame battles about how tall, how short, how big, how thin, how shapely, how straight, how what figures, yeah, w what you are. Uh -huh. They fight the shame of their hair, they sh fight the shame of everything. So body uh, image, everything that you don't see on TV is about you, yeah? When you look at that news anchor woman, she's not like you. You look at this uh, lady who is on the show, she's not like you. So you feel like you are not perfect at all. So women have battles of body, uh, body uh, image. Men have um, battles of financial power. You look around and you're not driving the car your classmates are driving. Moreover, the classmates who never used to do better than you. You look around and the men around you have bought big chunks of land. You look around and you see the men around you have bigger houses, they have more beautiful wives, they have brighter children than you, and you feel ashamed because you don't feel complete. Um, men sometimes uh, and women have, have battles of, shame battles of the failures of their children, the failures of their, uh, their spouses. When your child cannot be one of the best in many things, when they make the mistakes, you also feel ashamed. You say there is nothing to say. Uh, some women will have battles of infertility, shame battles of instability, where they feel that if you don't have a child, then you are not a complete human being. Some people are fighting uh, trauma survival things like rape, death of children, victims of forced migration, you are a refugee, some people have been trafficked, some people have been divorced, others have been uh, dating and their debts have let them down. All those are some of the battles that people fight. And then others are battles of protecting secret, secrets, those things that happen in your home, which no one else knows. People in homes are fighting battles of shame, whereby they have uh, um, drunkard spouses, they have uh, spouses that are not faithful, they have mental illness in the family, there is a lot of unfaithfulness. These are things that we as Adventists are ashamed of in general, and therefore we don't come close to anything of, even you say it is a silent prayer request, because you are ashamed, and so on and so on. Some people are fighting aging, okay? It is not getting older that hurts. It's the fact that whenever you are, you are getting old, um, we actually believe that we are getting more and more useless. So the stereotype is whenever you are growing old that you are going to get useless in the society. That is some of the battles uh, we are fighting about shame. So how do we recover from shame? 
Are you a victim of shame? I am sure almost everybody is a victim of shame. Small children will tell you, I don't know how to write. I don't want to write because they think they are not writing better than their, their friends. So it, the first thing is that you must all recognize and understand the uh, shame and how it has shaped your life. How has shame caused your life? Poverty is shameful. And some people went to school just because they wanted to get rid of the shame of not being educated, the, the shame of not having enough to eat, the shame of not dressing like other people dress. So it is very important that you understand that shame isolates. It puts you in a cocoon of your own. So you need to practice connection where there is a culture of disconnection. Come close to your people. Come close to God's people because in God's sight, there is no rich or poor. There is no uh, sinner or uh, uh, a saint. All of us are God's people. Okay? It's very important to also understand your fellow church members. You are a young church. You are beginning to be a, a close-knit community. And it's very, very important that we... Uh, support one another in their needs of every day. Whether they make mistakes, whether they don't uh, participate in certain things, it would be because they have shame behind their life. So be compassionate, be kinder and to yourself and kinder to the person around you because shame will blame us. Okay, it, it's like it zooms into the weaknesses that we have. So we need to zoom out. Get, let that, uh, those things that make us feel not good enough to go behind us. So let's be kinder to ourselves and, and that will help us to be kinder to other, other, to other people. So dare to be courageous. Without courage, we will not tell our story or give the opportunity to receive and give empathy. So Jesus made the hemorrhaging woman to identify herself, the woman at the well to tell her story. So if you are going to, to overcome shame, you must understand that you have an issue. That is what the woman who was hemorrhaging did. She knew that she has done everything possible. She was hiding. She did not want people to know because she had shame. However, she knew that she must reach out if she's going to become better. Therefore, she reached out in her weakest way. May I just go and touch the hem of his garment? She was not courageous enough to even show her face before the Lord. So when, whatever flaw that we have, let's go to the Lord and reach out to him. When we reach out to him, the Lord will give us the courage. And therefore, when the woman was asked, who touched me? What did she do? She said, I am sure she did it very quiet. I am the one. I am the one. So be courageous enough to speak up when the Lord is doing something in your life. You will identify yourself and the Lord will bring the difference in your life. So to recover from shame, be compassionate to yourself. Practice being connected with other people. Don't stay home. Don't blame yourself. And understand that because things went wrong in your life, you still can be, you have hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. Does God know that we are ashamed? Yes, shame and disgrace is not our, uh, your portion as a child of God and a child of redemption. Jesus paid the price for your redemption. He suffered shame so that you and I will never suffer shame. Therefore, every shame and disgrace the devil has placed in your life, we decree and declare today that there will be total deliverance in, the, in Jesus' name. Because the Lord, the devil will always want to make us feel naked and we don't want to be brought before the Lord, uh, before other people. Remember what happens to Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. When they sinned, they, they, they found out that they were naked. And when they had the Lord come, they ran away and fixed figs to cover themselves of their nakedness. 
How long are we going to fix figs? Because those are leaves. They will fall off every other day. And we still will be ashamed. Therefore, we want to decree and declare that since the Lord Jesus Christ became ashamed so that we can be his children, that it's not going to be our portion. The book of Romans 10 verse 11, that's the verse that I was talking. The scripture says, whoever believes on, the, on him shall not be ashamed. Let's come to the Lord with all our heart and put our burdens before him. We shall not be ashamed. And Isaiah 54 verse 9 says, Fear not, for you will not be put to shame. And do not feel humiliated, for you will not be disgraced. But you will forget the shame of your youth and the reproach of your widowhood. You will remember no more. Remember, that is what the Lord has promised. Fear not, you will not be put to shame. And even as we start our church here, sometimes the tendency is, oh, today we didn't have many people. Oh, the offering was not good enough. Oh, the machines did not work very well. And there are so many things we can relate to which make us feel ashamed in one way or another. But the truth is, the Lord is telling us, whosoever believes on him shall not be put to shame. We are not, for you will not be put to shame. You remember Mary Magdalene? She came to Jesus and her life changed forever. Why? Because she decided not to fear. And the Lord never ashamed her after that. And uh, up to this time, we talked of her as one of the, uh, the gospel heroes. Why? Because she dared to look for the person that removes all the shame. So today I leave you with this word. That the Lord is delighted to see you take his gospel to all these other areas. And the Lord is with you. The devil's biggest trick is to make you feel ashamed. But the truth is, you have believed him. And you shall not be put to shame. Thank you very much. Before our preacher leaves, we're going to cut the cake briefly, and then she can leave. Um, as the ladies carry the cake the other side. And the ladies join us to sing Women of Faith as we bring the cake beside Brian Triambeko. Rocky. Women, wherever you are, join me in the singing. Jesus, this 
desiring to serve, leaning on God's promises, standing on His word. We are women, women of faith, united in God's love, sisters in grace, looking to Jesus to lead us each day. We are women, women of faith. Yes, we are women of faith. Today we want to share our love with you through this cake. We are inviting our dear preacher and the ladies putting on uniform. Even the young ones putting on uniform. Uniform. Uniform like this one. What I'm putting on. Eh? If you're putting on this uniform, please. And then also the Gomesi is uniform. Our uniform. Please. Mama, Mama, come and represent the women. Come. Women, women of faith. Yes, women of faith. Women of faith, come up front. Yes, we'll invite our dear preacher so that we cut this cake. And we share our love with you. We care for one another. So one of our caring acts is this. Eh? Uh, this is made by one of the women of faith. So Women Ministries has got uh, some women who know how to bake. Yes, we have ladies who know how to bake. We have ladies who know how to sing. We have business women. We have teachers. We have lecturers. We have professors. We have doctors. Oh my God. This is the. We have counselors. So don't be there and be frustrated. Yes. So our sister Monica is one of them. So if you have a, a party, check on our woman here. The woman of. Yes. Come, come, come. Yes, come and represent the men with the uniform, please. Yes, 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 my men. Wow, 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 wow. Okay, very good. Okay. Okay, one chorus as we finish. Women of faith, we are women, women of faith, united in God's love, sisters in grace, looking to Jesus to lead us each day. Please come and give us one more song before you rush out for Master Guide. God bless you. Emmaus Youth Choir.
Ali Wensi Enunjenyo Jenne Gomba Okugenda Jendi Vera Zeri Kufa Liri Vasanye Yohukuru Ali Wensi Enunjenyo Jenne Gomba Take us through the the prayers. Praise God once again. Yes, shall we pause our mouth because our preacher wants to pray with us before she leaves. Can we pause a bit? Hello, hello. We are going to honor the Lord. Children, 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 children. Time for prayers. When I'm ready to pray, what do I do? Mm-hmm. 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 Okay. You're going to pray. Anybody standing, children? Our Father, we want to thank you for loving us. We thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit. And we thank you for your day of worship. We honor you because you're worthy to be praised. Lord, it has come a time when we must part with my group. I want to pray, Father, a blessing upon this congregation. Where they will lack, may you be the provider. 
where they will slacken in wisdom, I pray that you give it in abundance. Where they will be discouraged, I pray that God, you will be the greatest encourager. Where they will be ashamed, dear Lord, you have been ashamed so that we can be glorified in your name. And Father, I pray that each person that is represented here and the families that they represent, whatever trouble that they have, I pray, Father, that you visit each of them and meet them at their points of need. We thank you because we know that you've had our prayer today. May you give us another opportunity to worship you and rejoice in being at your presence. For we pray through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Shall we all clap for our preacher? Yes, we want to thank you, Mrs. Ruth Matoya, for honoring our invitation. We are glad that on our second Sabbath, you have blessed us as women. And we invite you to always come and worship with us. As babies, we need people that will give us the wings that we can keep on flying to better heights. God bless you. Happy Sabbath once again. As we are enjoying the, the cake, we can sing a song as Rachel returns because she's doing the next program. Pianists, a chorus of your choice. Okay, children, children, the hour we are getting into is a serious hour, so we will not allow people to make noise. Can we all eat our cake and finish as we are singing? Let's be singing as the children finish their cake before we enter into time of prayer. Yeah, because anxiety is still up, eh? Four eighty five, four eighty five, four eighty three. Okay, four eighty three. Uh, let's sing as we prepare to enter into the time of prayer.
Yes, everybody. Let's take our seats. We are getting into the time of prayer. Please take this time serious. 309. I surrender. Sister Josephine. 478. I'll also invite Mrs. Ravire so that we can be able to pray. Oh, 78. 478 feet of prayer. Oh, let's 
have any prayer requests, please submit. We have the sick. We will not forget them in our special prayer. Anybody with a special prayer request? Anybody? Okay, we shall have Mrs. Rawire to pray for our families and the children. And then we are going to have Mrs. Sekatawa to pray for Emma's needs, the vision, the members, the growth of this church. Yes, and then I'll finally pray for the sick and the rest of the things. We shall all rise to honor the Lord. Put away everything that takes away your concentration as we in the presence of the Lord. Create that relationship with your God as we are going to pray. Sample ourselves for a word of prayer. Children who are playing, we are praying. Stop drinking water, stop drinking juice, stand up and we pray. Children, I want you to humble yourselves and we pray because we are going to pray for you. When I'm ready for prayer, when I'm ready for prayer, I humble myself, I close my eyes. I bow my head. Now I'm ready to talk to Jesus.
Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come before you. We glorify your name and lift your name on high. We thank you for this special day, the Women's Sabbath, and we thank you for each one of us, the children, the mummies, the daddies, the aunties, the uncles, and the aunties. We thank you for each one of us, our lives, and all that you've given unto us, Lord. We ask you to forgive us wherever we've gone wrong in mind, thought, deed, and word. May you forgive us, Lord. We thank you for this occasion where we have come together to talk to you. For you said where two or more are gathered in your name, there you shall be with them, Lord. We thank you because we know you're going to answer our prayers according to your will. Because you said before we call, you will answer us, Lord. And we are here this moment believing that you're going to answer us because we do believe and have faith in you, Lord. We bring the children into your hands. You see each one of them. They may have silent prayer requests. They may have the needs that they, the things they need. Lord, you see them all. May you grant them to them. May you give them wisdom to learn more about you and to understand all that is told to them at church and in their, at their schools. Help them to be obedient children. May you give them good health when they go to school. Usually there are so many sicknesses they catch from each other. But may you give them good health, Lord. Those who are sick, Father, may you heal them. Those who have little hope and don't know you, Lord, may you show your face to them that they will testify of your goodness, Lord. Bless each and every child that is here, that they may desire to grow to be like Jesus, that they shall be blessed wherever they go, and they shall gain favor before all the people and before you, Lord. May you bless each child here and touch them to continue to continue obeying you, to continue have reverence before you that they shall not play in church, but they shall know that this is holy ground and they shall worship you in truth and listen for as much as they can understand so that they can know more about you, Father. We, we continue to, to pray that you bless the children ministry and the leaders, the teachers that are there to teach them, give them wisdom on how to train the children in your way that they shall never depart from them. May you guide their parents as they groom them too, that they shall, you shall give them wisdom on how to raise them in this difficult world. Continue to bless our families and the children at large, even those who are not here in different churches and in our places, in our homes, in our neighborhoods, Father. Help us as little children who may shine out to others, however little we are that they shall know of your goodness. And someday maybe other children may come here to, to the church and they shall testify it's because of the other child that I came to church, Lord. We pray for the families, the mummies, the daddies, the aunties, the uncles, whoever stays with us, Lord, bless them. Give them the funds that they need to raise us. Give them more the wisdom. Help them to teach us to learn the Bible. And in our homes, help us to have devotion that we shall learn more about you, Lord. Guide the parents and provide for them all that they need. Give them good health and bless them in all things. Thank you, Father. We know that you have a lot more in store. May you give us according to your will. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Kind and loving Father, we thank you for today. We also thank you for the life that you've given unto us. Together with the words of my sister, Lord, we come before you asking for your mercy and kindness to be upon us each and every moment. We want to thank you for your son that you sent on the cross to die that we can be alive. The same son, Lord Heavenly Father, sent us into the world to preach your gospel. May you fill our cup, O oh Lord, so that we can overflow unto others, so that they can see your goodness, O oh Lord, and come to you. Heavenly Father, Emmaus is a new church, and we need you more than ever, Father. May you come upon us and also provide for all those needs that we still want to put this church to shine. May you continue to bless our pockets so that we can be able to purchase a lot of things that are needed in this church. May you continue to strengthen us in faith so that we can be able to preach your word as you sent us, Lord Father. May you continue to be in our presence. May everyone that is around us here, the, all the community that is nearby, Lord Heavenly Father, may they see your goodness in this church. May we be able to also shine upon others in every way possible, at our workplaces, at our homes, Lord Heavenly Father. Because without you, Lord, we are totally nothing, Lord. 
May we get to understand that it's only your word that is going to put us further. May we be able to preach more and more so that more souls can come to you, Father. It's only in you that we find peace and freedom, Lord Heavenly Father. Continue to bless the leaders of this church. May you strengthen them. May they be able to lead others and be examples and never shame your word. May you continue to bless each and every soul in this church. Let us continue working in unity, Lord Heavenly Father, so that this church can be a success. I've prayed all this, believing and trusting in your son, Jesus. In the same spirit, Father, I come before you to thank you because you've given us life. Irrespective of all the things that happen in our lives, irrespective of the diseases that come and attack us, Lord, you are still God and you reign above all these things. Father, in this afternoon, we choose to dedicate our dear members that are sick. Jesus, when you passed, every disease was healed. The spiritual, the medical, everything was healed. The ones that were not going to receive healing, those that had stayed without healing, Father, when your son Jesus Christ came, healing came through. This afternoon, we invite your son Jesus to visit the sick. We have different people in this church that are sick. As women ministry this afternoon, we offer a special prayer. With the rest of the members, we stand in agreement. Because the Bible says that where two or three gather and ask whatever they ask, you will give. Father, we are agreeing with the women ministry and the rest of the church members that, dear Lord, may you visit Monica's child and cause healing upon him. May there be peace in their house. May provision be there. Whatever medication they need for life to continue, Father, may you provide. Father, we are praying once again, send your fire of healing into the house of Mr. and Mrs. Stechanzi. Where are they sickness cause healing to happen oh lord because you're the great physician we trust you dearest jesus we also father invite you this afternoon with the son that healed so many diseases may you move down in the house of the tibirondas and may you heal javas may you heal joel father we also have other people that are in the hospitals others are in their homes in this neighborhood of chirinya and far and wide. This afternoon we are standing in the gap that may you cause healing because the power is in your hands. You are a great physician. And the Bible tells us that you are near to heal all our diseases, to heal all our wounds, to heal all our broken hearts, dearest Lord. Father, this afternoon we once again come before you that may you cause financial breakthroughs in our houses. Different people are troubled. There are houses that are traded with a lot of debts. There are houses that do not even have food on their table. There are children do not, that do not have school fees. Some parents never sent back their children to school. Father, we also have those that are even coming back to pick balances. We have those that have loans, Lord. We have those that have never developed. They set projects, but they are stunted, Lord. Father, we have been engulfed with the curse of poverty. We have been engulfed with the lack. But the Bible says that your children never lack. The Bible says that you have plans for us to bring us prosperity and not disaster. While this country goes through an economic depression, dearest Lord, hear our cry. We cried unto you in COVID and you did it for this country, Uganda. We are standing in the gap as the church to call upon you. Because you said that those who call you do not call you in vain. We are not seeking you in vain. We are calling you on behalf of Uganda that may you cause a change in the economic situation. Even in other countries, Lord, there are countries that are still suffering COVID. There are other diseases that have come up like monkeypox. In schools, we have infections. Children are not concentrating. But Lord, may your healing hand come through for us. Lord, we saw you do many things. You can not forget about us. The Bible that we read tells us that you're a God that never changes. If you healed in the later days, if you healed yesterday, even today you can still heal. 
That is why we are coming back to you because we are much sure that you are only source of help. We are looking unto you because you are our author of faith. You are our Alpha and Omega. This is why we are calling upon you this afternoon that may you change situations economically, may you change situations health-wise. Lord, Father, at the particular moment, we also pray for those that do not have jobs. There are a number of people that lost their jobs out there. They don't even know what to do next. They don't have food on their table because they don't have what to do. Lord, we are praying. Everything that is in this world, as Psalms 24 says, belongs to you. May you grant those that do not have jobs what to do, because this is what you want us to do, to work, Lord, not to sit and just be there. Lord, we pray that none of our members and rest of the people become beggars, because this is not our portion. So in the name of Jesus, we stand with authority to claim what is ours. We claim all our riches according to the word of the Lord. We claim our health in the name of Jesus. We claim all our jobs in the name name of Jesus. We claim peace and sanity in the name of Jesus. Father, this afternoon, we want to request you that you establish us in, kind, in righteousness. You establish us in that obedience that you want us to be. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 54, verse 14, that in righteousness we shall be established. No tyranny or terror that will befall us, Lord. Father, Lord, we are inviting you that you plant us in that righteousness. If in us there is something that we have that you did not plant in us, Matthew 15 says that the axe is near to uproot that which you did not plant in us. May you uproot every sin that has hindered us to relate with you. Because Isaiah says your hand is not short, neither is your ear. But because of sin, everything has been cut off. The bridge has been cut off. This is why we are asking you this afternoon that once again reason with us. Once again grant us that good relationship. Give us the confidence to move on in our life challenges. Lord, our earnest desire is that we be that Joseph, that we be that Samuel, that we be that David, because we cannot be able to move we cannot be able to do anything if we cannot move like Christ. Thank you for your son who died for us. Thank you because that blood was enough for us. Nothing can use us for its sacrifice. Father, as we part, I pray that we only part physically, but in body, in spirit, we keep, Father, worshiping, Lord. I pray that throughout the week you give us the vigor to continue to worship you, O oh Lord. I pray that your peace that surpasses human understanding. We locate us in our various needs, Lord. Thank you for all that you have provided for us for this Sabbath to be a success. As women, we are happy, Lord. As women, we bless your holy name. Because where would we be if you did not walk with us? From Monday to day, Lord, you gave us the strength to move on. Thank you for all the finances. Thank you for all the summons. Thank you for the preachers. Thank you for people that gave the pieces of music that were beautiful. Lord, thank you for everybody that took part into the success of this Women's Day. We bless your holy name. We pray that you continuously use us far and wide. Thank you, Jesus. And we want to thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, this sweet Holy Spirit has done us good guiding us, molding us, teaching us. Dear sweet Holy Spirit, continue to abide with us. Continue to ground on our behalf because you know better things for us. You know what we, is best for us. We pray all this trusting in our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs>before we go into other things, we had said we are going to do a ministry to share our faith. We said we stand with others. Uh, we have things that we have brought so that in the course of the week, we can share out our love. So everybody that carried things in their cars that have things, I ask you to bring them up front. And others, our ministry is open. Please don't stop bringing what you have so that we can share. We will choose a team that will represent us to distribute these things. But before we distribute them, those that brought these things, may you bring them forward so that the elder can be able to dedicate them, to pray for them before they are out in use. 
Yes, we have sisters that had carried them, please. I want to thank the ladies that took part in making sure that this day was a success. And we also want to thank our dearest men, our dearest husbands, our friends. Ah, we could not have done this if they were not part of us. So thank you so much for blessing our day. We shall revenge on the men's day. Everything, count on us. Eh? We counted on you and you did it. We want to thank you so much for all the things that you have done for us, all the contributions. May God bless you. Come yes. Come every blessing. We're waiting for the ladies with the things that we pray for them. To sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing. Call for souls of loudest prayer. Sister Awino. Teach me Please carry your things for what? to adore thee. May I still thy goodness prove while the hope of endless glory fills my heart with joy and love. Here I Yes, we are going to dedicate others brought us money. The elder is going to dedicate these things so that we can be able to share with others. And I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me Sister, are we know and Why Mommy Elio and I come here. We are going to pray for you. Thank you for providing. Please come. to me from danger. It opposed his precious blood. Yes, I also have a bag. I forgot to carry it because I was caught uh, up with so many things. I'll bring them and you pray for them before we give. We have a big bag for, for things to share with others. Yes. Elder, we have uh, money here. We also have some things here. Our sisters here. Yes, on the, the day of women, we opted that we are going to share our love with others. So they have managed to bring some things. So we are praying. Uh, we are requesting you that elder, you dedicate these things and this money. Yes, it can go out and uh, on behalf of Emma's, uh, we can be able to share our love uh, to the rest of the people out there. And this is going to continue to be our habit as women uh, to share. So in the course of the week, if you have something that you want to share, please don't get tired. Just carry it here. We pray for it. We dedicate it. It goes out to the ministry. God bless you. Shall we pray? Gracious and loving Father in heaven, an hour like this, we come with you with lots of gratitude. For you've enabled us to exercise the highest mot of Christianity. Christianity is about caring. Christianity is about compassion for others. Christianity is a spirit of giving. I ah, will thank you for the sisters that have tried to give out. You said, blessed is the hand that giveth. I ah, will pray that you bless the hands that have given. They do not give for pride. They do not give that they have plenty. But they give because you also gave. May whoever receives these things see you. May they bring harmony. May they bring peace. May they bring salvation to whoever receives them. 
teach us more to give to others. Train us more to be compassionate over those that are in need. Even when we are equally in need, Father, you taught us to be the, like that widow that gave only that that she had. And through giving, she had more. This in our sight could be very little. But little before you is more. Multiply them and continuously guide us to emulate this example. May it be a faith that we should be able to show to all our neighbors. That we should always have love, like our slogan goes, that we should love God, love our neighbors, that we reach out, that not I, but Christ. Father, we want to thank you for everything the women have been able to do today. We want to thank you for their dedication and sacrifice Many even have so many challenges before them. But even when they're entangled, they still want to worship and praise your name. They still want to have time to adore you. Father, teach us to how to should be able to have this as our culture and practice. May this be a fellowship that will always be ministering to multitudes. Let this just be the beginning of more of such habits. Grant us your grace and love. Abide us in your favor. And continuously cleanse us of all the bad things we do. As we leave this place and continuously do your ministry, let your grace and spirit abide within us. As we say the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the first for the Holy Spirit, be with us all, now and forever. Amen. Thank you for worshipping with us. All our leadership coordinators should stay back for a small meeting. Yes, hope to see you next Sabbath. Hope to see you on Wednesday because we have worship.